After hundreds of traders seeing massive success trading the strategy for my newest video and having many request this, I decided to make a video backtesting the strategy so you can get more of a play-by-play -play learning experience. My name is Jesse, or as you probably know me, Casper, and I am a funded day trader managing hundreds of thousands of dollars in prop firm capital. And if there is one thing that I have learned, it is that I would not be where I'm at today without my edge in the market. An edge is found by having a proven strategy in the market that will generate profits over time. So you're probably wondering, how do I know if I have an edge or not? And the answer to that is very simple, by backtesting your strategy. Backtesting your strategy not only helps you know if you have a proven profitable strategy, but it will eliminate fear and hesitation, which will dismantle you as a trader. So in this video, I am not only going to show you a backtesting session that I did for the simplest ICT strategy known to man, but I'll also show you how to backtest your own strategy so you can have confidence in the market and be one step closer to becoming a successful funded trader. So enough with the chit chat, let's hop on the charts. In today's video, we're gonna be backtesting the strategy that I put out in my last video. This video saw a lot of good reviews, but I also had a lot of people who didn't understand the strategy. So I think it's important if I'm gonna show you the strategy on the video, I wanna show you how to backtest it as well. So for this strategy, we're going to be only using the 15 minute. We're not gonna be placing any trades if there are red folder events in the morning. And the first steps of the trade are a liquidity raid with a clear displacement. We're then gonna enter on the 62% retracement of that displacement. And we're gonna put our stops at either the high or the low of the liquidity raid. Then we're gonna target the 0.27 extension and we're not gonna trim, we're not gonna break even stops. Again, this is a very simple strategy and we're gonna be risking 1%. Oh, also entry must be after 7 a.m. New York time. Also, I put EST in the last video, that's Eastern Standard Time. A lot of people didn't know that that's New York time, but there you go. So what we're gonna do, um, we're gonna go ahead and go to the New York session. What's really cool about Forex Replay, you can actually just click go to, you can go to the next session, the next daily open, or the next silver bullet. I might have to make a video on this. If you want me to make a video on uh, the silver bullet, go ahead and leave a comment just so I know that people want it. But for this, we're gonna just hop over to the next session. That's gonna take us right to the Asia session. So we're gonna click it again to go to London and click it again one more time to go to New York. So it is set to go to the seven o'clock, which is what we're looking for. Um, you, can also, you can also edit these settings in the custom settings. Super cool, a lot of stuff you can do. We're not gonna mess with that right now. So we're on the 15 minute chart. Um, we're coming into that New York session. What we're gonna be watching for is that liquidity raid, which it looks like we're getting right here. Um, we're taking out that high. Let's see if we get any displacement. So we do have a displacement taking out structure. This is very important. So we've got our displacement. We've got our liquidity raid. We have to execute this trade. And this is the key to success with any strategies. You have to execute it relentlessly. So we're gonna put our short or our sell limit right here on that 62%. We're gonna put the stop at the high of the look rate, which is the highest candle after this liquidity was taken. And we're gonna target that 0.27 extension. So the way that you're going to use Forex Replay is you're just gonna go in here and click place order while you have this position tool selected. So literally you click that, it automatically puts the limit, it puts everything you need, and it even puts your risked amount. Now for some strategies, you may be risking different amounts, but for this one, we're gonna be risking 1% and it automatically calculates that. So I'm just doing this with a $100,000 uh, base amount, um, but you can do it with whatever you want. You can input that into the settings on the dashboard, which we're gonna go over later. But for here, we're just gonna be risking 1%. So we hit save and that's it, automatically places it. So let's just go ahead and let the market play out, see if this trade hits or not. So very clean trade. It ended up hitting right over here and went straight to TP. So a lot of the time with the strategy, that's how it's gonna work. You're gonna know pretty quickly, but I wanna be clear that that is not required. Um, it, it can take as long as it takes to get to the target. So you can see the balance now is 102,348. We're just gonna click go to, click next session. That takes us right to Asia. Now we're in London, now we're in New York session. So makes this super um, repetitive task pretty easy. And they didn't always have this go-to feature. Uh, they added it after a lot of people in the community requested it, which is another thing I really like about Forex Replay is they're very community driven. They're in the Discord, they're always listening to suggestions and they're actually taking actions on those suggestions, not just saying, oh yeah, you know, that's great. And then they don't do anything. They actually will implement the things people are asking them, like the silver bullet, like the go-to feature, like news events. I mean, it's really, I mean, just, I, I love this product, I can't say it enough. So here we are, it's 7 a.m. So at this point, you're gonna be looking for some kind of liquidity raid. You know, I could maybe see how someone would say this is a raid, but what we really need is to see a big displacement under a low. Now, if you look, we have a low right here. Um, the reason it is a low is it has a higher low on either side of it. That's all we're needing as far as structure be taken. So let's just see if we get a displacement under that candle. You can also click right here to just get the whole, um, whatever 
section you have printed here to print at once so we can print out one candle so let's just wait okay the market displays to the upside so there unfortunately there was no liquidity raid before this displacement so most likely this day would not have given you a trade um so you know it's past noon and that's when we're going to be stopping to watch for entries so at that point what we would do to save time instead of just watching the whole day is just go to the next session go here so now we're at the london session after you click it twice and now we're back on the new york session right here we have a red folder event in the morning so this also would not be a day we're trading this so we would go to the next session that's going to bring us to uh sunday now something else i didn't put in the video but this is just kind of uh, should go for common sense since there is no new york session on sunday is we don't trade sundays so we'll go to the next session which is london on monday boom next session and now we're here at 7 a.m so let's see we've got what looks like it definitely could be a liquidity rate here but again we need a displacement which is not that that is not displacement what we want to see is the market push up okay it gives us a nice push up so at this point what you're going to do is you're going to take a fib and you're going to want to just set your limits right here on this 62 the stop at the low and then target that 0.27 extension we're going to hit place order it automatically puts that up boom so now you're good there and let's see what the market does it looks like it's going to tag us in oh it does not tag you in so you know this is something that happens uh with all strategies and what happens with a lot of people is when they see this stuff happen they start bending their strategy and the worst thing you can ever do is change your strategy in the middle of a test or the middle of a live market because you completely destroy the edge because it's not consistent therefore there is really no data while it sucks to see that happen and if that happened in a live market you'd probably be big sad unless you maybe adjusted your limits for spread and got lucky but overall for the test this wouldn't count uh sadly um you know some people may use a fair value gap near this area that's their own strategy at that point because they're changing the way this works so sucks to suck but we would have gotten missed that day so sadly let's go to the next day so now it's at london so now we are in the new york session but it looks like we have a red folder event so a no trade day here and you know that's where a lot of people get burnt up is when they're just waiting and waiting they can't wait like they just start destroying their edge because look we have another red folder session so again, you know, people get really, really upset whenever they don't get a trade every single day. You know, I got so many questions. Does this happen every day? Does this work every day? If that is your mindset, you are not ready for this industry. It's just that simple. Like if you are just so eager and so anxious to trade, you're going to blow your account just like 90% 90, 90 of people do. But one thing that's really cool about backtesting is it lets you visualize um, this, you know, without having to wait for days because, you know, maybe ha like imagine missing a trade right here, right on a Monday. Then Tuesday, there's red folder. Then Wednesday is red folder. So you just completely miss your trade here. So you're already kind of tilted. Now you can't trade here. So hopefully you adhere to your rules. Maybe you break them and then you can't trade the next day. So what happens to amateur traders at this kind of, in these conditions is they start to screw up. They start to bend their rules. They start to, you know, do different things that they wouldn't usually do. And this is why so many people fail their prop firm challenges. So many people fail at trading in general. So it's very important to look at the bigger picture because in all reality, this isn't even that long. It's three days, right? But that can seem like an eternity whenever you're in a live market. But backtesting can really help you get a grasp for you know what to expect and to understand that setups don't happen every single day and you can still make a lot of money without trading setups every single day. In fact, most of the people who make a lot of money don't trade every day. So here we are at 7 a.m. Let's watch the market. Oh, it looks like we might have a setup here. We got a nice liquidity raid. So let's see if the market hangs out. So, and you would have put a limit right here and a stop. Um, but really, this is all the same displacement. So when you're looking at the market, it really barely paused. Yeah, it formed a little low, but it didn't even come into a fair value gap. This is all going to be one displacement. So again, this is where I get people that I think just don't understand the strategy or they don't understand market structure or displacement. But again, I have videos on all that. I have the ICT market structure video. So if you don't understand displacement, go ahead and watch that video after you're done with this one. But this is how you would set this trade because this is all the same displacement. You put your stop at the high of the liquidity rate. I notice this liquidity rate happened after 7 a.m. That's totally fine. The liquidity rate can happen before or after. It's just the key that you know smart money took out buy side and then displaced. That gives you your bearish bias and your bearish dealing range. And then you're able to find that 62% entry. So you want to make sure you click this, get it as close as possible. You can also um, put on the prices and stuff on the fib tools. We're not going to do that right now, um, but it's going to be very close still. So at this point, we're going to click place order again. We've already went through these motions, so I won't bore you with the details. 
and let's see what the market does. Now notice that the market tagged us in. Okay, it's before 12 p.m., so we're all good. And at this point, you're just gonna let the market ride. Okay, da da da. This is where a lot of people get frustrated. They might close their trade early. They might have gotten scared here and closed their trade. And this is where people destroy themselves in the long game. So you can see that this trade took a while to play out. That's totally fine. And there we have it, goes right to the TP. So what I want you to take away from this is picture yourself in this kind of situation. If you do not have the willpower to hold through things like this, to be patient, to let the market do the work for you, then these strategies will fail you. But it's really not the strategy failing, it's you failing the strategy. So again, there are so many lessons you can take out of backtesting that are going to transpose into your trading. And if you're not backtesting, I mean, even if you are profitable, you're missing out on a lot of data and a lot of insight that you can't get while trading live. Because right now there is zero emotion, right? I'm able to intake information with zero bias, with no emotion, which your brain is going to learn more. It's just a fact of the matter. Now, you do have to learn how to trade in the live market and learn how to actually manage your emotions and all of that. And that only comes from trading. But I think that a mix of both backtesting, forward testing, and live trading is 100% required to be successful in this game. So now let's go to the next session. Going to bring us to the London session. So now we're in New York session. Did get a nice liquidity raid down here and the market is displacing up. So let's just see if we get an entry. Let's wait for a swing high to form. Looks like a swing high formed right there. So we'll put our limit at the 6.2. Make sure that lines up good. Put a stop loss down here. And I know a lot of people are saying, oh, there's equal lows right there. You wouldn't want to put a stop loss but that's just kind of the way you have to do this in order to stay mechanical. So you want to set your 1% risk, set a limit. Let's just see how the market unfolds here. So it hit the target. So when we're looking at this, the market came up, it retraced for three candles, went into this small fair value gap, and then created another displacement. So at this time, you would just cancel your trade, you know, kind of chalk it up to the market and it's part of the game. You're not gonna hit every single trade. But this is where a lot of people start chasing the market and FOMOing and again, destroying their edge. So we'll go ahead and go to the next session. So it moves us to Sunday. So now we're gonna hit the next session, get to the London session. So we're coming in on Monday. We've got a nice profit here already. We're already up 4.7% on the account. That is more than halfway to phase one of most funded challenges. So we've got a nice liquidity right here. We took out these highs. Let's see how the market goes. It looks like we're forming a swing low here during the New York session. So what we're gonna do at this point is we're gonna kind of track since this liquidity rate high. So this liquidity was taken out during that London session on Monday. So we're gonna take a fib and draw from the top to the bottom. And I want you to notice we have a nice little bit of liquidity here. We're not gonna be setting our limits above that because again, that is gonna be destroying your edge. I know the SMC or ICT trader in your head is saying, you know, use the liquidity and it might hit it, but you don't want to just set limits on that. Now, if you're wondering why I use this whole range is we didn't really displace under these lows right here. You see, we're just wicking and the displacement really begins right here. But remember to keep things mechanical, we have to put our stops at the top of this range. So we're going to put our sell limits right on that 6.2 stop loss above the look rate high. And we're going to target the 0.27 extension of the range. Again, we just click place order. Boom. There we go. Now let's go ahead and see how this played out. It did take out that liquidity, so sure, you might've gotten a couple pips more, but we're not really worried about that. And let's just see how the market played out. Uh, it's kind of moving sideways. And again, this is where a lot of people start to make mistakes. They start to just close their trade early and then they ruin their edge. Here's another area I wanna point this out where a lot of people, a lot of people, if they're watching the market still, which most people sit in camp on their positions, when this trade comes back up a little bit, they're gonna get scared because it got close to their target and they didn't close it. So what's gonna happen is they're gonna close their trade right here. And even if this trade ends up hitting your stop loss or anything, you're still ruining your edge, right? Be and what's gonna happen is they're gonna close their trade right up here and out of fear, and that's gonna ruin their edge. You know, Even if this hits the stop loss and they would have said, oh, well, I, I secured profit and uh, you know, yada, yada, that doesn't matter. That mindset is toxic and you won't last. Yes, you might make more off one trade, but trading is not meant to be treated on each trade. You need to treat it as the entire process. So you can see right after that, it ended up hitting the target. And if someone would have closed here, they would have sacrificed almost one whole percent of their account. So now we're looking at this. We've got a very nice cushion of profit. We're up 107. 32. So this is almost passing a funded challenge phase one for most firms. So at this point, you want to be done for the day. You're just going to go to the next session. And this has us right here. Oops, I accidentally went too far. So let's just see how this would have played out. The market came under this low. And also, if you look left, we took out a level of liquidity right here. 
So after that, what we're going to be watching is some kind of displacement shift in structure. Looks like we got it right there. And you would have been able to draw a fib from the liquid low to the high of that displacement. And then you would have sent your trade entry right here. And then you would have put your stop loss under the low and it would have went to your full target. So if we would have risked 1% here, the account would have been over $108,000 and this would have passed phase one of most challenges. Um, again, sorry, I went over too many sessions. Sometimes that can happen. So one thing I wanna be very clear on guys is I th this back test, you should do way more than this. And I encourage you guys to do hundreds of trades because that is where you're gonna get real data. But for a video, I'm not gonna record hundreds of trades because well, for obvious reasons, that would be multiple sessions over multiple days but I highly encourage you guys to do so. Even if it's just spending an hour or two a day or a week, whatever you have time for, you need to be back testing, you need to be refining your strategy, and this is gonna give you actual data. Speaking of data, what you're gonna be able to do with Forex Replay goes farther than just using this trading view chart. You're actually able to go to your dashboard and you can see all of your different sessions. Um, I recommend keeping this cleaned up and you also are able to have strategies. So what's really cool that you can do is you can click on each session and you can go to your analytics. So you see the simple ICT strategy, that's what we just did. I can go to the analytics and you can see the actual win rate. You can see the overall account balance. Now, I wanna be very clear, this strategy does not have a 100% win rate, it does not. There is simply no strategy that has a 100% win rate. If anybody ever tells you that, they are a scammer and you need to run far away. So I wanna be very clear, this strategy over time will have around a 50 to 60% win rate. But with 2.4 to one risk to reward, that is still very, very profitable. And we'll do more live backtesting videos in the future. So that way you're able to see that this does not have a 100% win rate. Again, repeat, it does not have a 100% win rate because people are going to go in the comments and say that I'm telling you this has a 100% win rate. It does not. So it's going to show you your average risk reward, the max risk reward. It'll even tell you how many trades could have been profitable or break even. So if you're in a strategy and you're testing and you see this number is really, really high and the strategy is not that profitable, it can give you insight to go ahead and maybe add some kind of trade management system like break evening your stops after a certain risk to reward or other parameters. Um, it tells you everything about the average duration of the trade. It tells you the winners, the best win. It tells you, I mean, literally everything about the winners, the losers, all of the trades together. It even tells you what trades are best by the session. Of course, this trading strategy is only gonna be used during the New York session, but if you wanna just take something like this and go test it in all sessions, you'd be able to see which ones are the best, which ones made the most profit, the win rate, and everything. Another thing that I really like about Forex Replay is you can see what strategies do the best on what days. Now, I challenge you guys, try this strategy on Mondays and Fridays versus any other strategy. I promise you, it is going to do much better because any other strategies I test, they do not do good on Mondays or Fridays. So that is all for today's video. I am a partner with Forex Replay. So if you guys wanna get a 15% off membership, you can click the link in my description. You have to click that link or it won't work and put all caps CASPER into the promo codes. Now, if you wanna get an annual subscription, you can get 7% off, but you have to put CASPER7. So that's it for today's video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps me out a ton. And I always appreciate you guys. We've been growing crazy lately. I mean, especially this last video has taken off. So again, thank you guys so much. And always remember, if you can't see the liquidity, then you are the liquidity.